for your healing. Uh, touch us, Lord, and give us uh, supernatural strength uh, to do your work. Uh, we thank you, Lord, that we have a sound mind, that you've not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and a sound mind. And in Jesus' name, uh, we thank you for speaking to us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Brother Fred? Uh, tonight, I want to talk about making plans for a great year. I believe uh, at the beginning of the year, it's time to reflect on what, what you want to accomplish during the year. And uh, so that's what we'll be looking at. Uh, it's time to make some decisions. It's a time to make some decisions and, and resolutions about, about the future. Sherry and I have been working on some resolutions, and I have uh, shared those with you, and I, I, I shared a refined uh, set so that you could follow along because I want to go over those, but I noticed that number eight was let, dropped out for some reason, and so I'll go over uh, number eight uh, with you, but uh, what, what I have determined over the years is that often we make resolutions at the beginning of the year, and we write them out, we think a lot about them and pray about them, and then we put them aside and, and uh, nothing happens. And, and we don't go back and we don't follow through with a lot of those. And that's certainly been the case with me, but I have a different plan for this year. And there's a verse that has always stood out to me that's a really powerful verse in Isaiah. And it's Isaiah 32 verse eight. And it says, a noble man or noble person makes noble plans and stands by noble plans. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know how you consider yourself, but I want to tell you, you are noble because you have the King Jesus mm -hmm. inside of you and you are dead, but he is alive and living through you. So you are, in fact, noble. And not only that, but you are also a royal priesthood. So yes, again, I mean. you are a noble person, and so you ought to be making noble plans. Now, how can we make noble plans? Well, we're going to have to consult God and the Holy Spirit and Jesus, because that's the only way we can make a noble plan. We can make all kinds of physical plans, but a noble plan has to be inspired by God. And I believe that. Uh, we have uh, the beginning of an inspired plan uh, for this year, and I'm going to lay it out to you. It's something that Sherry and I have agreed on that the two of us are going to follow, and I invite you to follow with us and to be a part of um, planning for a great year in your own life. Uh, I want you to have a wonderful year, but I tell you, God wants you to have a great year as well. <coughs> excuse me so let's just think about this for a moment you know if we don't make there, there's this old adage or old saying that says if you don't stand for something you'll fall for anything Damn, that's right and so let's make a plan and let's develop some decisions about what you want this year 2022 to look like what is it you want it for you what do you want to accomplish well there's a lot of decisions that you can make today that will uh, help you in the year ahead. But if we don't make, uh, we don't make any decisions uh, here at the beginning of the year, then we just have to accept whatever comes our way. But the whole idea of this message today is that you are in the driver's seat about your year, about the whole year. You are going to determine the outcomes, and you determine them today. It, it's, you don't wait until December the 31st uh, of this year to determine what your year is going to look like. You look, you determine it early on, and you are a noble person, and it says you make noble plans, and so I'm going to show you how to make noble plans. Now, the reason that a lot of resolutions that people make in the first of the year don't work is that they're all about themselves, they're not accountable to anybody, and they don't show or share the resolutions with anybody. They just make some resolutions, write them down, put them in the desk drawer, and forget them. Mm -hmm. Those are not going to happen. They're not going to be fulfilled. 
And so what I have today, I believe because of the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I have an inspired plan uh, that we can follow uh, that will help all of us. <clears throat> and now the thing about the body of Christ, we are all together. Mm -hmm. and, and it's none of us is an island unto ourselves. That's right. And so we can all uh, make plans and we can affect each other and encourage each other and keep each other accountable. So there's some ways that you can uh, develop an effective year, uh, an effective plan for this year so that you will have a great plan and a great year. And, and that's what we want to do tonight is to talk about how can we plan a noble plan how can we make a noble plan and how can we stand by it so both of those are important making a noble plan and standing by it and what i'd like to tell you is that where do you get the inspiration for the noble plan well it comes from the word of god Amen. the word of god is going to lay out a plan for this year and the place where i started for our plan that Sherry and I have worked at is in Hebrews. And uh, the King James Version and the New King James Version uh, have 12 verses that start with the word, let us. 12 verses that start with let us. Now, the thing about a verse or a word, a phrase that starts with let us, it's not a commandment from God. And, uh, but it's something that we should be highly encouraged to do. This is something that the Bible says, let us. So uh, whoever the writer was, might have been Paul or it might have been somebody else, but he was writing this letter to the Hebrews. Now, Hebrews were people who were Jews who had accepted Jesus Christ. <laughs> and so they knew a lot about the word of God and they knew a lot about the temple and how the temple operated and how religious services operated. But they had some problems. They uh, still were on milk. They were on the milk of the word. They hadn't matured. They had not <laughs> matured. Uh, and, and so this letter uh, to the Hebrews, and of course it's written to all of us too, because we are uh, grafted into, uh, and, and we are Christians, and so we are members of the body of Christ, and so the book of Hebrews definitely applies to us, but there are a lot of things in these 12 verses that I believe form a, a, a body of a plan uh, that we could build on, and, and that doesn't mean you have to have limited you're not limited to this but it might be a starting point so that's what i want to do to you to do today is to just go over these 12 verses and and they all begin with let us and so like i said the word let us it is not a commandment but it's something highly encouraged that we are highly encouraged mm -hmm. to do these 12 things and, and i want to go over them and i'll add in a uh, number eight, which which got uh, dropped off of your list, but I have it on my list. So uh, let's just go over these. These are resolutions. Uh, but the thing about resolutions and what's unique about this is this is a resolution for us. For all of us. Let us. That's what I said. Let us make these resolutions. That's what the, what the scriptures are saying here. Let us do these mm -hmm. things. And now, Sherry and I, uh, is one form of us, mm -hmm. and, and so that's what we've decided to follow these 12 things, but also I believe as a group, we could all adopt mm -hmm. these 12. Now, you're not limited to here, but this, I think, is a good starting point, and what we want to do today is to learn how to make resolutions uh, that will impact our year and our lives mm -hmm. in this year and our family mm -hmm. in this year, and, and so we're better to start than with the word of God. Hallelujah. And so uh, I'm going to go over these 12 and I'm, I'll go over them probably a couple of different times because some of them are similar and I want to point out those similar things, but also contrast the, the ones that are similar. But uh, uh, number one, and, 
And when I wrote this down, uh, I tried to be as close to the scripture uh, to explain it, uh, but I, I, I've really changed my wording on number one. And so if you have a pen, if you have your uh, resolutions uh, there before you, what to help us both number one and two relate to entering rest, entering God's rest. And so this must be pretty important if these are the first two uh, mm -hmm. priorities that he has here, uh, but, they're, but they are different. So they're similar in that respect. They both relate to rest. But the first one, help, uh, let us help others mm -hmm. enter rest. So that I put it into my words. Uh, I, of course, I had written down there what the scripture said, but the, to really for me to understand it, number one says, let us help others in a rest. And so that's a resolution that Sherry and I have agreed to that we're going to do. We're going to help others mm -hmm. in a rest. Well, I'm going to help her. She's going to help me. I want to help you. We, we all help each other enter into rest. Number two is be diligent about entering into rest yourself. Let us be diligent in entering rest. But number one was about help other people interest let us help others let us help one another i know how we can do that okay you uh, and the the how uh is very important how do we help others enter into rest and that's th that's <coughs> through intercession that's through uh praying for one another uh that they will uh, not worry about things that they will not be stressed out that they will uh, be led by the spirit of god uh, that they will follow the Lord, uh, they will be studying the word, and all of that will help them to enter into rest. And so intercession and prayer for one another is extremely important in number one and in number two. So we can encourage others to enter into rest, and we do that by encouraging them to read their Bible, to pray, and praying for them. So there's a lot of different things we can do. We'll, we'll be uh, considering these. Uh, there are two others that, that are closely related, and I want to compare them and contrast them, and that's number three and seven. Now, number three uh, mm -hmm. says, hold uh, tightly to your confession of faith, and number seven is hold tightly to your confession of hope. Ooh, hallelujah. Now, uh, it's really, mm. and, and I need to distinguish those two. One of them is about faith, and the other one's about hope. Uh, but if you look just at the King James, both of them would say faith. Uh, but if mm. you look at all the other translations, what I've tried to do is to look at a lot of different translations. I've probably looked at 12 different translations on each of these scriptures to get a sense of what is it saying. And, and so number three I believe it's saying, hold tight to your faith, your mm -hmm. confession of faith. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people waver. And uh, if they're uh, talking to Christians, they'll say, oh, I'm healed. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. I'm healed. And then they you know, go talk to uh, their friend and say, oh, I'm so painful. I'm so, I'm so uh, I'm depressed. Hurting here, I'm, I'm hurting, hurting here. here. I'm hurting there. And so they're wavering back and forth, uh, wavering back and forth. So we, what this is saying, hold tight to your confession. Mm -hmm. In other words, mm -hmm. keep keep confessing the same thing Amen. all the time. Amen. Amen. Don't, don't, don't confess uh, being in faith to your Christian friends and uh, confess being sick and in pain to your other friends. No, confess the same thing in faith. Now, seven, and this is, I quoted the Amplified here, it says hope, hope. Hold uh, tight, tightly hold to your confession of hope. Well, hope and faith are similar. They're, they're related, but they're different things. And it, faith, of course, is the evidence of the hope. So you've yeah, got to have I, both I, of them. Yeah, and so we, we need to remember that it's important for us to have both faith and hope. And, and so confess hope and confess what are you hoping for? See, we're talking about today about planning for the year. What, Amen. what are you Amen. hoping for for this year? Are you hoping for a good year, mm -hmm. a great year, a bad year? You don't know. You don't have any hopes. No, this says you better have some hope. Confess. Mm -hmm. it, 
tightly hold on to your confession of hope. Now, something that the Passion Translate says there on that hope was let your heart wrap around your Ooh, hope. See, glory. See, when it says hold on to your wow, faith, wow. And faith in the third one and the seventh was hold on to your hope. You, you don't see it. You can't hold it with your hand. So you have to realize oh, wow. what are you holding on to it with? It's, it's your heart down here. It's not your mind. It's your heart. Wrap that heart around and let your heart or wrap around your faith and let it wrap around your hope. So have some hope. Have hope about the future. Hallelujah. That's why, that's why we're going over this tonight because we have hope about this year. We have hope. This is going to be a great year. That's my hope. Hallelujah. Hope. I have, Hallelujah. I have faith. My see, I'm putting my faith to action because I'm sharing these things with you. I'm sharing with you what I'm hoping for. I'm hoping for a great year. But not just for me. I also want a great year for Sherry. But I don't want a, just a great year for me and Sherry or Sherry and me. I want a great year for sure. you yeah, each one of and you. your family as well. So this is my hope. This is my hope. And I'm going to put my faith with my hope. So three Hallelujah. and seven uh, both relate to something very similar, your confession. You need to have a confession about what you're hoping for and a confession about what you're believing. And that faith should be uh, girding up your hope. That's exactly Okay. Right. Now, there are two others that are closely related, and that is number four and six. And number four mm -hmm. uh, on my list is about go to the throne of grace. Grace, I mean. Go, so draw near to the throne of grace. And the other one... Uh, is number six. And of course, that begins in Hebrews 10, verses 19 through 22. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what this says is about come to the most holy place. Okay, so the throne of grace, that's a particular place. Uh, uh, it's where we receive grace and, and mercy, mercy in time of trouble, and, and we need help of grace and mercy. So the throne of grace is a very specific place in heaven, in the heavenly realm, in the supernatural realm. The most holy place, I believe, is a broader place. Mm -hmm. and, and, and the reason I say it's a broader place, because the throne of grace is where we get our grace and our mercy mm -hmm. when we have trouble, when we get help for us. But now the most holy place, which is also in the supernatural realm and includes the throne of grace, but it's broader because we can carry our family Ooh, and our friends that. there mm. because uh, mm -hmm. Hebrews 10, 23, it says, let us <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. stir up or let us mm. spur one another. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Oh, let us spur one another. So mm. it's not just about me, see? It's, not, it's let us carry our friends, carry others. Let's, let us carry our, our family. Our family. Let's carry one another into the most holy place. See, there are no limitations in the most holy place. But the throne of God, I believe, is a specialized place where we get our needs met for us, but now in this most holy place, which includes the throne of grace, I believe it's broader and it's unlimited, and you can carry others there. And what what by is the it, spirit by the spirit? And what does it say to do? It says to stir them up or spur them on in two areas: in love. And in good deeds. Mm, hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, yes, they're very close. But but I think that one is the one we care. That's where we carry mm -hmm. our mm -hmm. family and our friends. And we do that with our prayers and, and with our supplications and our requests. We, mm -hmm. we make mm -hmm. oh, glory to, to the Lord. Make all of those things known to the Lord. So, I, I've shown you that uh, six of these verses. There's some similarities in there, but I've tried to distinguish. So let's just go over, over the 12 resolutions. And now, as I present this, I want you to think about, can you agree with us that when it says, let us, that you're in agreement 
that this is going to be your resolution for the year yeah. as well, that we can come together as a group uh, of uh, loved ones who and, can and believers uh, and believers that we uh, can lift each other up in these areas and hold each other accountable in these uh, in these areas, because this is what Sherry and I plan to do this year. We're going to take some of the topics in these resolutions and these 12 different things, and we're going to teach on them from time to time mm -hmm. during the year to help us all understand them better and to hold us accountable and remind us, oh, this is something uh, I, I resolved to do. I, I made a, a resolution about mm -hmm. this earlier. And, and so that this is the plan. We have, we have been in prayer. We have identified 12 resolutions uh, for the year to help us all have a great year, not just right. a, a mediocre year, not just barely getting by, not just existing this year, but a great year for all of us and our families. And see, noble people will make noble, noble plans. plans and stand by them mm -hmm. and if, because if we don't stand for something, we will fall for anything. Okay, so, and so at the end, after I go over these 12, I want you to be thinking as we're going over them, can you agree with these things? And this is all Bible. I, I don't yeah, see you yeah. say, oh, I'm going to, I'm just going to mark out the book of Hebrews. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's the part of the Bible. It's, right. it's the Bible. And these 12 verses, they're the Bible. They're coming right out of the Bible. Can you agree with them or can you not? And, and do you want a better year this year than you had last year? Do you want a better yeah, year for your family yeah. than you've had? Do you want a great year? I, I believe we all can have a great, great year. year. Amen. And, and I believe the Holy Spirit is showing us how we can have a great year. And so when I go, after I go over these 12 things, 12 resolutions, I want you to Make a note as you go by. Yes, I can agree. I will agree. I will. At the end, I'm going to ask you, do you, are you willing to make these resolutions yours this year? You can make other resolutions and, may, and maybe you've already made some resolutions for the year. And if, you, mm -hmm. if so, well, uh, that's good. I, I'm glad you have. I'm glad you've thought about the year. Mm -hmm. But if you mm -hmm. haven't, it's not too late. We'll do it tonight. Mm -hmm. Give you an opportunity. Let us, th these are 12 uh verses related to let us mm -hmm. hallelujah. hallelujah so the first one of course hallelujah is let us help others enter into rest so rest must be pretty important and that's hebrews 4 1 number two is let us be diligent about entering into rest, rest. ourselves and that's hebrews 4 11 number three is glory to god Let's, Let's make whole time our confession of our faith. And number that's four. Hebrews 4, 14. And number four, which is Hebrews 4, 16. Uh, come near, draw, to let us come of, of grace. to the throne of grace. Number five, and this is pretty important for all of us. Uh, is Hebrews 6, 1. Come to maturity. Let us Let press, press on, on to, mature. to maturity. That's pretty. Uh, that I, talks about growth. That talks about getting off of the meat and starting to eat the, uh, off the of, meat off, the, off, off the, milk. the milk and start eating the meat and so th this is pretty important hallelujah number six has come to the god in the most holy, holy place, place. That's hebrews 10 22 now 23 then this is number eight mm -hmm. 20 number three no, that's seven. Oh, oh i'm sorry seven then is what uh Hold on to your confession of hope. Oh, a confession of hope. Mm -hmm. And number eight is to spur one another. Yeah, stir on. up one another to love and good works. Love and good works. Hebrews 10, 24. And, and then we're down to number nine. Number nine. Let us run the race of faith with endurance. Hebrews 12, 1. It's a race of faith. Yes. And we do it with endurance. We've got... See, that's the reason we need to be encouraging one another because one may fall, one may get weary, mm -hmm. grow weary yeah. during the year. We pick each other up, hallelujah. We encourage each other. That, that's what it's all about. Then the next one is show gratitude. Yeah, let us show gratitude. That's Hebrews 12, 28. 
And then we get down to number 11. Now, number 11, let me explain number 11 okay. to you. Hebrews 13, 13. It, it says, go outside of the camp. Go out, out of, the uh, of the religious, religious walls. walls. Okay, so this is why, this verse right here explains why you and I, as a group, can agree with these resolutions. It's not about the local congregation. It says go outside of the wall. Now, let me explain that. When Jesus, mm. the, the culmination of Jesus's life on the earth, they kicked him out of the temple. That's right. Oh, hello. They couldn't bring him in there. Uh, what they should have done, uh, you know, in, in retrospect, uh, was to let it all culminate right there in the temple. But no, they pushed him out. He was crucified yeah, outside the gate, outside the gate, outside the camp. And some people went out there to see him. Some people went to mock him, but some loved ones uh, stood there and watched what was happening to him. And so because he was crucified outside of the walls of religion, outside the religious walls, then we have to go out there too. We have to, and that's the reason everything is not done uh, in a local congregation. There are times when the believers come together, like we're coming together now, we're, we're not uh, a religious uh, organization in, in sitting in a little building. I mean, this is reaching out uh, to different places. And so that's what this one is about. And it gives us the okay that, that what doesn't have to be restrained and restricted to the walls of a religious organization. Amen. It Amen. says, go out where Jesus is. By, go to Jesus uh, who was crucified outside mm. the religious walls. Mm. Oh, glory to God. Good. And then yeah. the 12th yeah, and 12. final one is to make sacrifices, offer sacrifice sacrifices of praise. of praise. Hebrews 13. Can, can you do that? Can you resolve? to offer sacrifices of praise this year. Okay, so we've got uh, being thankful is mm -hmm. one of them mm -hmm. and offering um, praise. Yes. That's a, those are, you. can you do that this year? Can you be grateful for what God is doing in your life and in your family? Can you give him praise? Because he's worthy. He's worthy of all praise all praise mm -hmm. and so these are the 12 resolutions that sherry and i have agreed on and then and this is the let us yeah so we've agreed on these 12 and i'm just going to ask you outright can you agree or do you want to participate with us this year in these 12 resolutions right. gwen just just a, a quinn just uh, got on so okay. do you want me to read the 12 or okay let's just quickly go over all the right 12. i'm just going to go over quickly uh quinn just joined us and uh we're thankful for that but let me just uh as you as you think about you know are you in agreement uh you know concerning these 12 uh let us help others enter to rest uh let us be diligent to enter into rest ourselves number three let us hold fast to our faith and and lucy joined us praise the lord and then number four that we're going to draw uh, close to the throne of grace number five we're going to press on into maturity Woo, hallelujah uh, we're going to start eating meat this year and then we're going to draw close to the most holy faith a place and then uh, we're going to hold tight to our hope we're going to our confession of hope uh, we're going to, number eight is we're going to stir up one another uh, to love and to do good works. Number nine, we're going to run the race with uh, a faith with endurance. We need strength to do that. Number 10, we're going to show gratitude. Number 11, we're going to go outside the religious walls. Woo, hallelujah. Number 12, we're going to offer up sacrifices of praise. Hallelujah. 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 This is the word of God. This is the word. And you may have other resolutions as well, but I know I'm in agreement. Okay. So Sherry and I are <laughs> going to be in agreement. George and Joy are in agreement. Okay. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to be in agreement with these 12 resolutions. And if uh, some of you agree, 
then this is going to give us a guideline for some mm -hmm. of the things that we will be covering during the year to, so that we'll know how to mature. So we'll know how to stir up right. one another. Uh, to and love, how to endure. And how to endure. How to endure. Uh, and so I, I just want, I want you to be thinking about that. And if you're willing to commit to that, well, let us know. We'll be glad to, to uh, continue on in this process. I believe that this is a way to have a great year that we need to make plans. And here are our plans. We've shared them with you. And if you're in agreement with that, well, uh, hallelujah. And uh, what I'll do, I'm going to, uh, since number eight had been dropped off for some reason, I'm going to send this group out again, uh, cleaned up, and number eight will be on there, but it'll show you. And all, again, all 12 verses were found in the King James and the New King James. But then when I got ready to share them with you, I wanted to get the best meaning. And so I, sh I looked at a lot of different verses and I tried to explain them in from the different verses. Uh, so I probably looked at 12, 15 uh, different uh, translations to come up with that. And so- And Quinn I, just said, I'm in agreement. Okay, so if you're in agreement, oh, then, then we're going to hold each other accountable. We're going to go back over these and bring to our remembrance that these are the, uh, the resolutions that we have made for our families uh, this year and we're all together noble this, plans uh, we're making noble plans a uh, noble person makes noble, noble plans, plans and stands by, by them see it's it's one thing to make uh, noble plans and then just write them down and put them in a desk and forget them about the year because sherry and i intend to bring these things back to, to your us, remembrance uh, to your remembrance through the year so that we can stick with this with our noble plan and we can see a great year that's our desire that's sherry's and my desire for each of you to have a great year for you your family your loved ones the people you minister to mm -hmm. this is going to be a great year hallelujah all right i'm going to turn it over to sherry when i believe that when he says great year i believe that that's a productive year i believe that's a productive year in the natural realm in your workplace, in what you're doing as, as a career, uh, also uh, uh, physically with, with your family, uh, with your friends, uh, with your work in the kingdom. But also I believe that it's a spiritual uh, great year where we grow in the Lord, where we pray more, where we study uh, the word more, where we encourage one another. Uh, and that we stir up one another uh, to good works. And so I believe that's a definition of, of the word great. 